take time out here on CBSN to go into a little more detail on some of the things that make weather here in the Bay Area so fascinating and so unique. And for this week, we're going to talk about what is probably one of the most often referenced things weather-wise, the marine layer. What exactly is it? And why has it been on a little bit of an overdrive for much of June and this very first part of July? Real pretty time lapse of it from uh, just about two weeks ago. The thing that drives this is the cold water that we've got right off our coast and in the immediate bay. And it has huge implications when you live this close to the water. If you look at one of the more unique temperature setups that we had here not too long ago, it was 64 degrees in the Presidio. The same day it was 97 degrees on Mount Tam. So you do not have to go far inland to get the big warm-ups and to lose the benefit of the marine layer. Sometimes all you have to do is walk uphill. And to explain that, here's a quick review of exactly what we mean when we say marine layer. When you hear that term, we're only talking about that layer of air that sits right above the water and that's influenced by the cold sea surface temperatures that we all live with. So technically, marine layer is not the cloud, it's not the fog. Marine layer is that layer of air within which all of that develops and takes place. So we've got to go over one of the most I think uniquely related aspects of all of this for Northern California. If you look at a map of the sea surface temperatures across the globe at our latitude, something really sticks out for California. You can see everywhere else on here shaded into the oranges and reds. And then right off the coast of California at the same latitude where everywhere else it's relatively warm, you get this very cold pool of sea surface temperatures right off of our coast. I'm going to come back to the formation of this in one second because it's probably the, mo the singularly most important thing when it comes to the microclimates and the uniqueness of our weather here is that pool of cold water. But for one moment, I want to look at this in a slightly different way. Rather than looking at sea surface temperatures, I want to show you the sea surface temperature anomaly right now. That is, instead of what it's normally doing, how far off the scale from normal are the temperatures? And you see a unique pattern. There's a big red bullseye right here, a big area where the sea surface temperatures are much warmer than typical right out here in the Northeast Pacific. And the reason that's there is because there's been a somewhat semi-permanent center of high pressure for much of June in this first part of July, sitting out in that part of the Pacific, doing two things. First of all, it's warmed up the water underneath it. High pressure just does that. High pressure pushes down on the surface of the sea and that warms up the temperatures and warms up the sea surface temperatures. But the other thing this has been doing, high pressure spins clockwise. And if we come in for a close-up look, that clockwise spin around that high means we have had a consistent flow of strong northwesterly winds right off the coast of California. That's pretty typical. We always have that. But for the last several weeks, it's been a little bit stronger than normal. And that takes all the sea surface temperatures of the water here. It takes all that surface water and pushes it away. And then something has to replace that. So you get this massive amount of upwelling. Water coming up from the deeper depths of the coast right off of California's coastline to replace the water which has been removed here. So the water becomes much colder right along the coast of California. That's the California current, and it's probably the most important aspect in why our weather is so unique around here. Over that cold water, the marine layer develops because cold water just cools the water, the air above it, and then that air condenses out into a cloud. And that's basically the oversimplified version of how the marine layer develops and why you typically only see it right off the coast of California. But that only covers part of this story because at the same time we've been developing a robust marine layer off our coast. On the other side of the state, the exact opposite has been happening. Instead of colder temperatures, it's been noticeably warmer throughout the rest of the western U.S. for much of June and July. No doubt you've heard about it, the heat waves. If you look at the map that shows what the last 30 days have been like in terms of average, we've been solidly warmer than average to our east. That means we've got all this warm air over here that's rising because that's just what warm air does. When warm air rises, it pulls in the surrounding air to replace that air down here at the ground that has just risen away. And out here off the coast, we've got all this cold air because the California current's been on overdrive. 
Then you've got all the rising air over here to take all of that cool, wet air and pull it on shore. And here in the Bay Area, we've gotten caught in the middle. That's why the marine layer has been on a bit of kind of overdrive, really, for June and at least this first part of July, although that's going to change here as we get after the first week of July. We're going to go into more of a pattern that's going to allow the temperatures to warm up here at home. But that's a story for another day. The focus for today in this segment of Weather Extra is just to review why the marine layer has been a little bit more noticeable and why the winds have also been a little more noticeable for much of June and the very first part of July anyway, as we've been experiencing the pull of these two extremes that we've been caught in between here in the Bay Area. I hope you enjoy this. We're gonna do this at least once a week. We're calling it Weather Extra. Thanks for watching.